Hi everyone, it is the setup day for Bristol Warfare. Um, we are off, uh, we've just left Crediton now on our way to Exeter, pick up the M5 towards um, Bristol and go from there. So um, I'm hoping when I get there that uh, there'll be enough time to show you a little bit of um, setup day. If not, then I will um, show you more tomorrow and do try and do a walk around for you. Um, what is there to tell you this morning? Um, not a lot really, we dropped off Pat on a holiday, bless her, and um, we uh, packed the van quite quickly, so it was a, a nice, um, nice easy morning so far, so hopefully um, the traffic and the weather and everything will stay with us. We've only got about an hour and a half, um, just over um, an hour and 40 possibly. Um, till we get there, so it's not too big a distance to travel, so we should get there nice and early to um, set up the store. It's uh, currently quite humid, um, overcast, uh, minus the humidity, it's not a bad day for setting up really. Um, you don't want it too hot and you certainly don't want it wet when you're setting up. Um, we're in Marquis on Durdham Down in Bristol uh, for the Bristol Warfare. So, um, I'll leave it there for now and hope to uh, catch you in a moment or two when uh, we shall magically be there and uh, I'll show you set up. Okay, catch you later guys. Hi guys, it's, uh, we just finished set up. Oh look, sheep. <laughs> sheep everywhere, just full of sheep about. Um, finished set up, so uh, on our way home now to Devon. Um, didn't show you around set up day purely because there weren't a huge amount of people about, so I thought it might be better to do that tomorrow. Um, that way, you know, get a good view of what there is for sale and, you know, see if you like it for next year. Um, looks like there are certainly plenty of storeholders worth coming to see so bear that in mind if you live in a locale where you can get to Bristol quite easily um, then I think it's going to be one to look out for for the future but um, I'll hopefully show you around tomorrow and um, looks like there might be bands there as well um, I think there's going to be animals there um, some sort of family um, element to it um, I think there's going to be some sort of show in the middle now whether they're going to show animals or not I don't know but hopefully I will find out and be able to tell you a lot more tomorrow so I'm going to leave it there for tonight um, as you can see hot flustered it's got terribly humid in the um, marquee and just generally it's quite humid um, and I shall see you tomorrow bright and early on our way to Bristol again for the first day of the show catch you later good morning it is Friday morning, first day of Bristol Warfare. Um, I'm all spangled up, as you can see. Trying to look nice for the customers, although I do look a bit tired. What's that about? Well, it is only half seven in the morning, so yeah, that's what it looks like, 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, not much to do this morning, um, but we need to hopefully try and get there for nine, quarter past nine, because I think there's a stall inspection at 9.30. Um, just to think for us sort of safety purposes, um, someone from the local council I think is coming. Um, so I want to kind of be there and just make sure that um, my stall is safe as it can be. I mean, it's all fluff, so I'm not anticipating on anybody hurting themselves majorly. She says I'm touching wood. <laughs> um, it will be nice to see all the other stall holders. Um, what's quite nice about um, this show is there are a lot of people that I haven't met before, so um, it will be nice to meet new stall holders um, and you know see new products, try new things maybe. Um, hopefully, all being well, I should um, get around and do some kind of small video for you. So I'll catch you a bit later. But it was just to say hi and good morning.
Don created me a rainbow this morning. It's my pick and mix. And some sale buckets. That's it. And my new chair, which I will be spindling on. Good morning, it is day two of Bristol World Fair. We are on our way. Um, we're on the M5 at the moment. It's looking decidedly murky and foggy outside, but we have been promised really good weather, so hopefully it will blow over. Um, when the sun comes out, it will be lovely and hot like it was yesterday. Thanks to everybody who came to say hi yesterday, it was really nice to meet some new faces and of course some familiar faces and uh, really hoping that I see um, lots more today and of course tomorrow because tomorrow is uh, the last day so it's a three days show at Bristol World Fair. Uh, didn't get a chance to take you round but I think it's because it was so busy yesterday so if I don't get a chance today, um, being Saturday I think it well, hopefully should be even more busy than yesterday, um, then I will try and do that on Sunday for you. Um, but generally went really well. Um, it was, I, I guess it's kind of an odd day when you do like a Friday or even a Thursday because you're never quite sure what um, to, to sort of make of it, who's going to turn up because obviously it's a work day for quite a lot of people. Um, so you don't know whether people are going to take a day holiday to come or, or what really. So, um, but yeah, yesterday was busy, um, very inspiring. There are lots of people there who I've not met before, so uh, it was quite nice to mingle with some new stall holders and find some new things for myself as well. And also it was an opportunity to catch up with a few people I haven't seen for absolutely ages, like Pickle Lily. Who I will speak more about at the end of this episode. Um, what am I hoping to do today? Well, I'm hoping to get myself a lovely hot dog. Uh, the hot dog stand was really tempting yesterday. Uh, the smell of these sausages was absolutely fantastic. I'm also hoping to maybe catch a glimpse of the, um, I don't know whether it's little duck races they're doing or what, but uh, they, there's a herd of ducks around apparently, so, <laughs> or a flock of ducks maybe I should say. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing them, uh, maybe catching a bit of sheep shearing. Uh, maybe, who knows, if it's quiet this afternoon I might wander into the music tent as well and catch a bit of the music because that sounded really nice. Um, quite ambient and low-key there's also a beer tent next to that, don't tell Darren. <laughs> Did you hear that? I did. <laughs> You're lucky I'm driving. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to do that, maybe get around and see a couple of um, other store holders who I didn't really get a chance to speak to yesterday. Um, but probably more than that, manning my stand and taking some cash <laughs> and enabling your addictions. So I'm going to leave that there and if I get a chance I'll show you around today but as I say I'll probably be tomorrow so I shall catch up with you soon. Cheers. Good morning, it's Sunday, the last day of Bristol Wall Fair. Um, so just dropping in to say hi. Uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to video anything else yesterday, it was just Manor Common Stall. So thank you so much for everyone who came out. Um, and also I'm looking forward to um, seeing some more faces today. I know there are a few of you who could only make it on the last day, so um, don't worry, there's still fluff and yarn left for you. Um, just. <laughs> um, but we shall, we shall make it worthwhile, I promise you. Um, the show so far has been absolutely fantastic. The response has been um, phenomenal for a new show. I think it's it's just brilliant. It's exactly what we need in the southwest, as I've said. So uh, yeah, today's the last day. Um, looking a bit more tired, <laughs> but it's still a smile. You can see it's still a smile. So um, gonna just see how the day goes, and I, I think it should be quite enough for me to get out and take some um, video just to show you what the sort of event area looks like and uh, quickly 
arms at some of the store holders on the way through the tents. Um, if I'm very lucky, uh, sorry for the wobble there, I might get a chance to watch the um, duck herding. Uh, so the, I, th I thought it was sort of duck races or something, but um, it's actually a sheepdog who herds the ducks into different stalls and things. So might get a chance to have a look at that. Um, hopefully swing by the uh, sheep shearing as well. Um, similar setup. I'm not sure whether it might be the same guy actually who does Fiber East. So it would be interesting to see that. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to um, give you a chance to look around. So I shall catch you later. Hopefully with some more video. Cheers guys. Just all fair. Sunday. I'm just going to show you around. So over here we've got like cafes and pub and this big tent. TP is like an ambient tent with music and stuff. Got alpacas over there. And over here is the sheep shearing experience. Not to excuse the wobble, the ground isn't particularly even. Alpacas making their morning noise. Bless them. A little cold. Up here, that's where they do the sheep shearing experience. And if we come around, first tent, this is the steward tents and the first aid tents and so on. It's quite a huge area as you can see. And over here, we've got the first tent, which is like the demonstration um, guild tent. In the middle here, we've got this is where the duck herding is, and these are the marquees with the store holders. So if I try and take you through the first tent, we'll see where we go. It's like the guild tents. Sorry, the first tent. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, we bought. This is the lanes. My tent, black beard tent. It's me in the corner. Yeah, 
yarns with. I think there's a lot of my yarns with 12 feet. Back out. Into Banksy. Hello, podcast. Say hello. <laughs> set guys that's a tour of Bristol Wall Fair I hope that you have enjoyed everything you've seen I'm gonna head over see if I can get the old man a cup of coffee before we start but I uh, just really wanted to show you what the place looked like and um, sort of people that are here because you know I think this is uh, a new show that you guys need to be aware of and uh, make the time in your schedule if you can to uh, pop down next year and see us because we would love to see you okay I'll catch you later when I do my final update and round up and then I'll show you my purchases. Yes, I purchased. just got back I promise <laughs> um, I've been back for a few days and uh, so I thought it was about time that I sat down and showed you some of the things I bought did a roundup from Bristol Warfare and just gave you a bit of um, information about what's going to happen on the website this month 
Okay, so where to start? Um, I didn't actually do as badly as I thought I did, but um, so I'm just going to grab a card there. Um, so yeah, I wasn't as naughty as I thought I might be, but I do like to support um, my indies where I can. So let's get started. This is my first purchase. <laughs> Uh, I purchased this from um, the lovely Pickle Lily. You can find Jo at www.pickle-lily.co.uk. So, there. And Jo makes lots of knitted toys that are all CE tested, and um, lots of other bits and pieces for kids as well in fabric and, and things as well. So, do check out Jo's website, Pickle Lily. As I say, everything's CE tested, and she does a fabulous job. I met Jo um, Cold Harbour, oh, I think maybe about four years ago now, and um, since then we've sort of crossed paths, crossed paths at shows. We used to, um, it's nice, isn't it, Patch? <laughs> we used to um, meet each other a lot at Cold Harbour Mill and try and get the same stall next to each other, so it was really nice to catch up with Jo and hear all her news she's doing very well indeed so go check her out um, this is for my niece Thea um, shh don't tell <laughs> I'm sure Thea doesn't watch this so we'll be alright it's not for you Patch the next one is a little um, crochet reindeer for the Christmas tree and this is made by um, Cat who is Stitches from the Sofa that's www.stitchesfromthesofa.co.uk That's her card there, I hope you can see that. Uh, and I just thought this would be really cute and fun. Maybe a start of something new for uh, my Christmas tree. So I've got a few knitted things but I haven't got an awful amount, mostly fabric things that I've collected over the years. Um, and then lastly, as I say, I was very restrained. Lastly, I purchased um, one beautiful skein of yarn, um, a Scandinavian skein, Perkalanka. And it's in this really beautiful purpley damson colour. It's four ply. Um, someone's being nosy about what I'm about to show you. <laughs> and it's pure new wool. And I bought this from. Midwinter Yarns and she specialises in Scandinavian product um, so a lot of Gotland and other Scandinavian pure wools. She can be found at www.midwinteryarns.com and that's, put my finger that said, those are her details. And I'll have all of the links and things on the show notes page at dreamingandfibre.blogspot.com Okay, um, so that's what I purchased. I'll do a quick uh, roundup for you. I mean, all in all, I mean, you can see every day I kept coming back to the same thing. You know, a massive thank you to everybody who came. It was lovely to see some familiar faces, to meet some faces, uh, to put to uh, website accounts and, and names and so on. Um, and also to meet some new people as well. Um, going to shows is, is always a good thing and always um, an exciting thing for me as well because it's nice to meet people. And also to you know hear their experiences um, with my product um, and you know I, ideas they might have for the future like colourways that kind of thing. You know always take these things on board and it's it's quite nice to be inspired by what you're inspired by as well ultimately. Um, the the fair itself as a trader was um really nice um to show at it was it was easy i didn't have to worry about anything um you know had all the information and things i needed at the time i needed it um i think customers generally or even walking around as a customer myself um it was easy to sort of find everything because it was quite nice and and quite small this year whether they'll extend it a bit next year i'm not sure but i actually quite liked the size it was it was uh, although there was a huge amount of people there it was easy to sort of get round and um a nice bunch of um different traders as well um quite a lot of the time you quite a lot of us do the shows and so we end up seeing the same people again and again which is nice you know you always you know, get a big hug from the 
those traders and say hello and find out how they are it's it's sort of um it, it's uh you know nice to to be amongst friends and and work colleagues if you like um but it's also nice to come across some new stall holders as well because i think that's what keeps it exciting and, and keeps it relevant you know so um that was really interesting and um as far as i know the whole show and event will be on next year so do check out Bristol Warfare. I think the site is bristolwarfare.co.uk, but I'll put that in the show notes and run that across the screen if I can as well. Um, I do recommend coming to visit it. I recommend taking um, time in your schedule of show visits to include Bristol Warfare. Um, and certainly if you're local, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from coming to say hi next year. OK, so that was Bristol Warfare. Uh, my next show is at West Point. I'm doing the Stitch, Sew and Hobbycrafts event uh, that runs from the 25th to uh, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. Yes, four days. <sighs> I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit worried. It'll be the first day I've, uh, the first time I've done a four-day event, um, and I'm kind of hoping that I've got enough stock, but at the same time, not too much stock. So uh, we shall see how that goes. It's uh, a bit difficult to kind of quantify how much you need versus the potential to sell, that kind of thing. Um, it's also an expensive show as well, so I'm not going to lie, it's quite pricey. Uh, so I've, I've got a lot to do and I've got a lot to sell um, at my lower end pricing um, to, to sort of break even. So. If you're local, please come and visit me. <laughs> Even if you just spend a pound, I will be grateful. Because <laughs> every little helps, as they say. Um, I'm sure it will be fine. It's uh, just a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, I've literally, I've come back. I had, uh, Monday was supposed to be uh, a day off, but it, it didn't really end up being a day off. Um, we had to go get patch. We had to take the van back. Um, I had to uh, do uh, some unpacking and moving around. Um, working out what I needed to do for the next show, um, you know, sort of cash up, all, all that malarkey. So Monday wasn't the day off it was supposed to be really. And of course, um, yesterday I had to start dyeing for Fibre Club and Yarn Club, which you'll be pleased to know is drying as we speak. And um, start dyeing again because I hadn't anticipated that I would do quite as well at Bristol as I did because, you know, it's its first show of its type in in that area so you never know what to make of it so um, I've been hard at work washing fleece as furiously as I can and um, dyeing as much as I can as well so I'm going to be back to work um, on some more dye pots tomorrow again and and just desperately trying to get everything dry in the interim um, so that's the next show um, and of course because of that I had planned for this sort of big unveiling of new product um, for mid-September. I think I'm going to have to hold that back and I might have to call it um, the winter collection or something um, and put that up probably mid-October. Um, can't give too much away because obviously I might have to postpone the dates. Um, as I say, I've got these ideas in my mind, but I just didn't have time before Bristol Warfare to, to crack on and get those products actually made, um, photographed and listed. Um, so it means that now am I back against the wall for the next show that I think I'm going to have to push that back. But I'm sure you don't mind. Um, there's plenty to um, still buy on the website. I'm also going to put up some more pre-orders as well so I'm going to try and put as many of the um, fibre colours up as pre-orders and also the yarns as well. Um, I am, I've got several pre-orders that I'm, I've got to do tomorrow as well so just trying to fit it all in there and I, I may have to pull some late nights and uh, hopefully take some time off after uh, this West Point show. So that's enough about the website. Um, I thought I would show you a little bit about what I've been crafting. Um, I have actually managed to get some things done. So uh, rather than show you uh, what I'm working on, I'm going to show you the things that I've done. And then next time, um, 
hopefully there'll be a little bit at the time and at the end again where I can show you hopefully some more finished things. So just gonna lean out of shot probably for some of this. Um oh no actually it's mostly here. Okay, so we're gonna start with what I've recently spun. Um I did manage to find a little bit of time pre the show. Um because I try and finish a few days early so that I can have a couple of days um, either to myself or to do those last minute run around things. So I managed to get um, a couple of afternoons off and evenings where I spent it at my wheel. Um, so I spun up a few things. The first thing is um, I had some pin roving. So I created, looking a bit washed out there, that's probably better colour, I'll insert pictures. Um, this is 100% wool, it's actually a Scandinavian pure wool, um, non-breed specific, uh, and it is a gradient which kind of stripes, so it goes from blue to a uh, dusty pink to a green and then back to the blue. So I've got that one. I haven't even got to the point, these are all wash and set but I haven't got to the point where I've measured them and got yardage and or any details like that so at some point I will put that on the blog craftsoftexture.com and um, talk to you a bit more in detail about those. Uh, this next one is, um, this is Dorset Horn I think, no it's, sorry it's Southdown which actually is lovely and soft and springy once you wash it and it feels a little bit harsh to spin with but um, certainly a pleasure thereafter and this is a colour from um, Fibre Club last December, November, December I think and this was called Berry Sauce so it was a Christmassy ode if you like so all, all kinds of reds with a little bit of coral in there as well for those cranberries and as I say, I'm not sure what this is going to be, but it's actually much more um, soft and springy than I anticipated it would be. So I'm really pleased with that one. The next one is Calypso. I did a small skein sample. Uh, ignore my skein um, ties there. But this is um, from the last club. So I, th I can't remember what month. It might have been... It was the July shipment, I think, and um, it's all sorts of lime greens to um, sage to like a teal colour and then uh, a sort of turquoisey colour too. So that came out really nice and it's nice to see that um, as I knit with it, I hope to start knitting with the sock yarn that I managed to keep for myself so you'll be able to see how... Um, knitting with a hand dyed skein of yarn um, compared to a hand dyed and hand spun skein of yarn will look so that would be quite interesting and again this lovely and soft merino superwash I think and then this one is merino this is chunky and squishy and lovely this is my blend colour deep autumn um, again I'll insert a picture here and there's quite an amount of this, um, if I remember right I had about 120 grams, something like that. And it was just a really pleasurable, nice, quick and easy um, yarn to spin. I did um, nothing special with it, I just let the, the yarn speak for itself. And I've got this lovely chunky skein, which will probably be a winter cowl I should think. Um, I love it, squishy. The, the last two things were actually things that I did at Bristol Wool Fair. Um, this is a skein from a bat. So there are lots of different colours running through it and textures. This is one of my bats, uh, one of my limited edition bats that have like all the bits and pieces in it. So um, lots of different textures. As you can see, you might be able to see there, there's all, all kinds of fluffy add-in bits. Um, this was something I started on my little spindle, this one, about probably about two years ago now and it's been one that I've sort of taken to shows and fairs and done little bits here and there on but nothing very much and I actually managed to finish this at Bristol Wool Fair so I was pleased with that. 
Again, I don't think it's going to be the hugest skein, but it will sit with my other mini skeins, which are up there, I think, in that little hole there, that little cubby. Um, and I will come to a decision about a project at some point in the future. And then I also managed to do this um, spindle full, which I have yet to ply. And this is a um, one of my merino silk blends called Peacock. Um, both of those were done um, as, as part of my demoing at Bristol Warfare. Um, so I doubt in the very near future I'll get a lot of spindling done. But uh, you never know. You never know. So finished items. Um, I've only got uh, some knitting for you today. I hope to have a little bit of crochet, but... Um, Never mind, there's always another podcast, right? Um, one, I can't show you, so there's a small glimpse. <laughs> I can't show you because that's actually a present for somebody, and I, I'm i not sure whether she watches. Um, I know she has seen some of these podcasts, but I'm not sure whether she watches re religiously as such, so um, I don't want to show too much. Uh, the next one is a pair of socks for me. This is out of um, the Countess Ablaze. Um, yarn that I showed you maybe two podcasts ago, maybe the last podcast. Just done a simple vanilla sock, easy gusset, a little rib at the cuff. Um, I need to wash those because I have a feeling the black might just need a little bit of a soak. But you would expect that with high saturate colours like this. So it's certainly nothing wrong with the dyeing at all. And I totally recommend the yarn. Um, it was easy to knit with. was was pleasurable as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I just think just that little extra soak before the first wear is sometimes the best thing when you've got really high saturates. So I finished that, which I was pleased with. And then I also did a little gauge swatch for my next sweater. Um, I will talk more about that another time when I get time to cast on. Um, I'm going to have to wash and block my swatch and then we'll go from there. I've done a couple of other sort of nitty bits and pieces behind the scenes but I can't really show you too much because they're going to be some more patterns. So yeah, August was kind of busy, not only preparing for the shows but I've also been trying to get a lot, new, a lot of new um, sort of design work done. So really excited about that. Um, and I should also say thank you for everybody who purchased and downloaded the last two patterns that came out. The um, Exmouth Shawl and the Stormont Exmoor Poncho. Um, they were really well received, so thank you so much. I know um, several people have knitted from those already, so I'm glad that I have been able to provide you with you know something fun to knit um, ready for the autumn. Okay, I think that's it for me today. I don't really want to go on too much longer because uh, I've got a, lots of editing to do before I um, start dyeing stuff tomorrow. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, next podcast, I hope to show you a bit behind the scenes about uh, the West Point show. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it. So oh, <laughs> happy september guys and i will see you again at the beginning of october now okay so catch you later and may you dream and fiber cheers guys <laughs>